Time tracking is traditionally not very fun to do, and usually it adds a lot of overhead to the whole development workflow. But now we have the solution for that, the seven pace time tracker. Let's see together how to integrate it and configure it into Azure DevOps and how it makes our life easier when it comes to time management. Hi everybody, and welcome back to Coder Day. Today, we are looking at time tracking into Azure DevOps and especially at one of the best tools I know for doing so, 7Pace Time Tracker. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. Just click on the subscribe button below and turn on the notification right now so you will not miss any other videos I will post. Stay with me until the end of this video because for the first time on this channel, I'm doing a giveaway. And it's very simple. Throughout the video, I will point out four different keywords that allows you to access the giveaway. Then all you have to do is subscribe to this channel, leave a comment with the four keywords and feel lucky. After two weeks of posting this video, I will randomly select one person and that person will be the winner. But it's important that you subscribe before commenting, otherwise the system will not be able to pick up your name. I will briefly talk about setting up 7Pace in your Azure DevOps environment and configuring it which by the way is pretty easy and straightforward. And after that, we will see the major features in the tool and what we can do with it. Let's start. 7Pace is basically an Azure DevOps extension. So it's very easy to search for that in the marketplace or directly from Azure DevOps and install it. But it's even easier going to the 7Pace website, 7Pace.com and click on the try 7Pace for Azure DevOps. When you do so, it takes you to the marketplace anyway, and you just have to select your Azure DevOps organization in here. In my case, I want to install in this organization, so I just press install, and that's it. Everything is done, I can just go and use it. As you've seen, installing 7Pace Time Tracker is just a matter of a few clicks. Let's see now how we can configure it. But first, here you have your first keyword for the giveaway. After installing 7Pace in your organization, if you go to the organization settings, you will find this 7 pace time tracker here, and that lets you configure all of the organization level settings for it. For example, you can set user permission, and then you can manage your subscription, your billing, and your invoices. As you can see here, I have 10 total licenses with eight users already licensed and two that are still free. I can then add user from here and I can also decide which default role the new users will have in my organization. And of course, if I select any user from the list like here, I can change the role as I please. But it's when we go to the projects that everything starts being even more interesting. In fact, as you can see, we have this new 7 Pace Time Tracker menu hub here. And if you click on this, you also have many more settings that you can customize. And this goes from you know, general settings for time or week management, all the way to specific rules that you can implement on your projects and your time reporting. For example, what I always do is enabling this one because I want to have all the time reported in relation with a work item. So I would always enable this in my environments. And you can also require a command or an activity type for every time your users will add a new tracking time in the system. And another very interesting part is the work item automation. You can enable the pace calculation based, for example, on the effort field, but it's fully customizable, as you can see, and also enable the automatic reduction of time using the remaining work or any other field you would like to use. And same thing for the completed work, which once again is, in my opinion, pretty cool. And these values are per project. So you can either apply to this project, or as you can see here, you can apply and you can copy that to other projects. Last thing I want to talk about is the activity types. And this is where you can define what kind of activities you want tracked in your environment. These are all the out of the box ones. And I think they are pretty comprehensive for most of the cases. But if you need more or different ones, you can always add one and change the color and change the favorite setting and so on and so forth. Of course, there is much more we can actually customize, but I think there is no need to go too much in depth in that right now. But let me know in the comment section below 
if you want to know more about the customization process of 7Pace. Let's see what we can actually do with the tool. I'm now into Azure board and let's navigate to the sprints. As you can see, I have here one work item that is assigned to me. So let's see what I can do. First thing we notice for sure is this new 7Pace time tracker here with the start tracking button. Let's say I want to start working on this. So I will just click start tracking and automatically the time tracker will start counting the time for me. Now I can close this and I can come back later. But another thing that you may have seen, let's open the other one, is this 7Pace time tracker tab over here. This one allows you to manually add the time to this work item based on the work you've actually done. For example, let's say I've worked from 5 p.m. today to 5.30 p.m. today for a duration of 30 minutes. I can set the activity type that we've seen before. For example, let's say I've done development and I can add some comment. When I save this and pay attention to the total up here, which is 68.50, automatically the total time has been updated and also here. If now I go back to the other work item, the one we started before, you see that the time tracker is still tracking my time. And so far I spent two minutes on it. So let's say I'm done with this and I click stop tracking. And now if I go back to the seven pace time tracker tab, you can see that I've logged about three minutes. And of course, since I've done it automatically, the activity type here is not set. We will see in a minute how we can change that. The integration with Azure boards that we've just seen is probably the easiest and more immediate way to interact with the tool for reporting the time and managing it. But there is much more to see. Before going back to the tool, this is the second keyword for the giveaway. Let's dive into the different menus under the seven pace time tracker one and we will go through basically all of those. The first one is the monthly page. This page offers, as you can see, a calendar like interface that allow to track time. And as you can see, you have the current month total up here and the weekly total here and here. And of course, you can also see the daily total. For example, for today, I totalize eight hour and eight minute of time reported. And I can as well view all the time entries for a particular day, just clicking on it. As you can see here, I have all the details of the work items I worked on today. I can always edit one of those. For example, this one that I said before, we do not have the activity type set, so I can just click and add the activity type and then save it. And I can also delete ones that I do not want reported. For example, this one and this one. Now it looks much cleaner. And you can also start reporting time directly from here using the start tracking button up here. If you click on it, you can select the work item you want to assign your time to, add a comment, the activity type, and you can click start tracking. And as for the start tracking button we've seen directly on the work item, this will start counting the time until you stop it. One thing that is not very clear here is the work item selection. Here, in fact, you would see all the work items that are assigned to you no matter the project. And this is somehow confusing, I think, especially if you have work items with similar names or identical names, it would be very difficult to understand which one you should associate with your reported time. You can of course see the project up here, but this is also after selecting already a work item. I think there should be an option to filter those work items based on the current project you are in, or at least have an immediate view of what the project is for those work items. And same thing can be done directly on the day, just clicking on the plus. And once again, you need to search for the work item. And here that problem of, you know, not knowing the project is even more visible because here you do not even have the project name field. So you either remember the ID or you need to go back to Azure board and check for the work item name. Next page is the timesheet. The timesheet provides an alternate method of viewing, uh, managing and entering your work item details on a weekly basis. The time you have already inserted displays with the work item in rows and the day of the week on columns. And once again, you can report the time clicking on the start tracking button over here. And even easier, you can insert sometimes just double clicking on a cell and insert the time. And if you click on this, you have much more details and control. For example, you can set the start time and I can set an activity type again, for example, documentation. Save and here we go. Everything is automatically updated. 
I find this view particularly useful when I want to review my week and see if everything is in order or I missed something or maybe misspelled something else. Let's go to the Times Explorer page. This is probably the most comprehensive of the pages and in fact, as you can see here, there are so many different things. The My Times contain the list of all the work items and all the time reported for a specific date, as you can see here. Then we have the Team Weekly report, same thing, but divided by week and by person and so on and so forth. And for every one of those, of course, you can still edit with the familiar interface and go directly to the work item if you want to see what that was about or you want to change other things. So this is pretty useful. Another very useful thing to me is the work item report because you can filter by project and by iteration and seeing for that specific project or iteration, the time reported by the different people in different days on different activity types. Let's move on and let's skip approvals for the time being. We will go there later and let's talk about iterations. This page of the seven pace time tracker basically provides you with a quick snapshot of how your sprint is progressing. As you can see, it is quite similar to the look and feel of the backlog page of Azure DevOps, but with more information about the time. And even more importantly, this page also allows you to assign budgets to the single work items, task or PBI, but even to the whole sprint or iteration. What are budgets? Well, we will see that in the next section. All of this is pretty interesting, isn't it? We also have a desktop application for reporting the time and managing it. And there's a mobile application, so you will be able to interact with the tool just with your mobile phone. All right, this is the third keyword for the giveaway. Last thing to see here is the manager experience. In fact, if you're a manager, you probably want to know how your team is performing, you want to approve their timesheet, and so on and so forth. Seven Pace has you covered. First thing, let's talk about budgets. This page allows you, in fact, to create an unlimited number of budgets. And those are, for time tracking scope, amount of hours to be spent on some activities. For example, let's say you've agreed with your team on a certain number of hours to be spent on documentation. You will create a documentation budget and you will insert the hours here, let's say 50. When you save it, you can assign the tracker time you want to those budgets. And you can include or exclude items from a budget or assign a budget to any object such as releases, iteration and sprints, single work items and so on and so forth. And you can do it from the page we've seen before or directly from here. You can just click add, search for your work item, click on it and assign to it. Boom. Now this work item will be within this budget. And remember that budgets are inherited. So if you assign a budget to a backlog item, for example, all the tasks in it will belong to the same budget. This is the reason why you can also exclude some work item from the budget if you don't want them to be counted against that budget. Next, approvals. As the name says, this section allows a manager or a team leader to approve the time reported by their team. And as you can see here, not everybody can approve. You must be an approval manager to do so. Approval manager are defined in settings under approval and only administrators can set approval managers. I'm an administrator here, so I can add myself to the list. And if I do so, now I can go back to approval and finally see the data. And for any specific day that is still not submitted, I can actually go in, check what has been done, click and close all the selected transaction. You can decide to lock it so there will not possible for anyone to actually edit that. Let's do so. And you can also have the possibility, as you can see here, to lock all the other weeks, but I would not recommend that because probably you want to go and check for each week if everything is okay. All right, last but definitely not least, let's talk about reporting. This section has an amazing collection of reports that you can consume out of the box. And of course, you can always customize and create other reports. I won't go through all the reports because there's a lot of data here, but as you can see, you have basically everything and anything you want regarding the team, the time you reported and the overall time that the whole project has taken. Different reports as different filters. For example, in this case, I can filter by dates. Let's go back to June, for example. And I have all the data from the 1st of June to the 10th of July. And as I mentioned before, there's a many other reports. You have the team report. And again, it's fully customizable. 
as you can see here, all those filters and you can add different widgets to it. For example, you can add a table one and you can select what you want to see in there or other personalization. Another pretty cool one is the team overview by date. And especially if you're a manager, this is super important because let's say, for example, you want to see the total of June. You just select the dates and you can see how your team performed in those period of time. And again, it's fully customizable, fully filterable, and you have all the data in a glance. And once again, with the fact that you can fully customize these, there is unlimited possibilities for reports. If you want to get reports to your team or to your C-level and so on and so forth. That's really awesome. Not bad, right? The only thing that is missing here, at least in my opinion, is a sort of centralized dashboard where manager and maybe even team members can see all the time that is being reported and manage it across different projects. You can actually achieve that right now inside the normal reporting functions that 7Pays offers. However, that would require the user to have some sort of permission on the team project. And you may not want to do that. Minor things, but at least in my opinion, worthy to mention. All right, that's it for today. What do you think about 7Pays Time Tracker? Do you like it? Are you already using it? Let me know your thought in the comment section below. And before we close, last keyword for the giveaway. It's actually not a keyword, it's your Twitter handle or your Instagram handle. So I can contact you in case you're the winner. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please consider subscribing and hit the like button below. Thank you very much for joining me today and see you soon at Corey Dave. Oh.